So you may notice that we're sitting in a strange location today. Very odd for us. We don't normally sit here, but the reason for that is today's video is about loud trucks. So in today's video, we're gonna be talking about tire safety and things you can do to improve the safety of your tires. These very important things right here. And we're gonna talk about a new TPMS we're gonna try out. So stay with us for that. That's right, and if you are new to our channel, I'm Tara, this is Chad, and we do a lot of other videos as well. We do really cool motorcycle ride videos. We also do videos at the different locations of different RV parks that we go to. We do product reviews, a lot of helpful videos as well. So be sure to check out those videos after you're done watching this video. And don't forget to subscribe to our channel and click the bell so you get all the updates on the latest and greatest videos that we put out. Let's Take this inside, it's noisy. Yeah. Going in. Tires and tire safety and blowouts. It's a huge topic online. If you've been on, especially the Grand Design Owners Forum, there's probably a post every day or two about China bombs. Yeah, this guy. This guy comments a lot <laughs> so, about them. I follow the issue really closely because we have Westlake G-rated tires. And everybody thinks that any Westlake tire is a China bomb. Well, if you actually follow it, the Westlake E-rated tires are the ones that have had issues. If you've got E's, some people have great luck with them and they're fine. A lot of people seem to have blowouts. Now, if you just kind of do the math and think about how many people are posting versus how many people are on the forum, it's still a tiny, tiny percentage. But a lot of people are swapping out their Westlake E-rated tires for better tires, Goodyear, Saloons. I mean, it's also how you take care of the tires too. Absolutely, and, and uh, there's a lot that goes into tires and tire safety, but I think the key is to take care of them. Especially when you're full-timing like us, your home is riding on these six tires. Take your care of them. Right <laughs> yeah, your lives are riding on these tires. It's true, yeah, your lives can actually depend on keeping your tires maintained, keeping the right pressure. So that's the kind of stuff we're gonna talk about. And we've actually traveled a lot of miles already on the tires that we have. How how many miles have we traveled? We have just over 10,000 miles this year on our Westlake G-rated tires. Yeah. 42 or so locations, we move quite a bit. So we take care of them and they've treated us well because we've treated them well. The obvious and most important thing with your tires is the pressure. Under pressure, <laughs> the, uh, sorry. The number one reason for blowouts is low tire pressure, which increases the heat and causes a blowout. Some people might think the opposite, too much pressure, blowout, it's not a balloon the tire. So if you uh, if you want to keep your tires healthy, the most important thing is checking the pressure. Now, we're not going to go into the most technically perfect way to get tire pressure perfect, is that right? That's a, that's a lot of... Uh... <laughs> perfect way, tire pressure perfect. The most accurate way to pressure your tires is to get every tire weighed, get the axles weighed, and to refer to your tire manufacturer's load ratings to figure out what weight matches up to what pressure. That's not gonna happen in real life. Your weights change all the time, I and mean, it's great to get a baseline, but generally speaking, you should just run your tires at the max PSI. So for us, we're rated at 110 PSI. Cold, that's key. You wanna check your tire pressure. You don't wanna check your tire pressures after driving all day. You wanna check your tire pressures when they're cold and maintain them there. The day before every departure, I always, always, always check our tire pressure and make sure we're at proper pressure, plus or minus a couple PSI. Yeah, if you haven't seen our video on our camp breakdown and setup, we'll put a link to it right here. It is lengthy, but it's very thorough and he goes into a lot of detail on how we get everything ready to go before we hit the road. And I do wanna say, I mean, he's not like a certified tire pressure safety monitor or anything no but he knows what he's talking about and so i mean this isn't like yeah we're not you know mr and mrs michelin over here but <laughs> sometimes i feel like the michelin man but we've studied this a lot and it's very important to take care of them so i kind of know what i'm talking about but you know don't go blaming me if you aired your tires to 110 psi and they should only be at 80. yeah that's true <laughs> yeah. Use some common sense and check your tires and everything around them before you leave. Look at the sidewalls, look at the tread, look at your shackles, look at your axles. Just physically look under there, look at your leaf springs. Make sure everything's in good shape. Make sure your leaf springs look like leaf springs and aren't, you know, bending backwards or flat. Make sure there's no nails in your tread. Your tire could look perfectly fine and you inspect it and realize there's a nail or a screw or something in the tread 
that wasn't leaking, but it's there, it's a problem. Fix it before you drive. That's right. And we also used a uh, UV protectant on the tires. Because we're out in the sun all the time. And you know, some people put covers on their tires. Did a little research on that and it was kind of 50-50 on whether it was a good thing or detrimental. Some people say that it holds the heat in and yeah. you know. We're not gonna get into a debate over that because yeah. we don't really, you know, we don't have anything to compare it to. Right. We've never covered our tires that way. But we do put a UV protectant on there and I put that on probably every two weeks. Uh, a, it kind of cleans the tires up, makes them look good, but the UV protectant is a big thing. That's what the covers are for, is to block the sunlight so the ultraviolet rays don't break down your tires and dry them out. Armor All is a pretty popular tire shiner. Don't use it, it's not good for your tires. Look pretty, but they won't last as long. I use the UV protectant that came with our Wash Wax All kit. Those are made for aircraft tires, so I feel pretty confident with that. Yeah. 303 is also a real good UV protectant. A lot of people use that. So another important factor, really important with trailer tires, is the age of your tires. Even if you've got good tread, obviously if you've got bad tread and you can't, you know, if you do the little penny thing. Penny test. Penny yeah. test. If you're not familiar with the penny test, it's basically you put a penny in your treads and if Lincoln's head doesn't go into the tread, then you need new tires. That's right. Uh, or you could also use a tire gauge but a penny works. Yeah. <laughs> and it's only cost you a penny. That's right. I know that for a fact. Another important thing though, besides the obvious tread wear that comes with time, is just the age of the tires. Now, you'll hear anywhere between three to five years with trailer tires is the maximum age. And I would err on the three year side versus the five year side mm -hmm. of that. The way to know your tires age, and it's not when you bought them, it's not when you bought the trailer. Uh, or your rig, because your rig could have sat on the lot, lot for a year, could have been moved around and sitting out in the sun. There is a date code on your tires. The first two digits are the week, and the last two digits are the year. So I have to look at ours, but let's just say it's 3115. That's the 31st week of 2015. So do the math, figure out when your tires will be three years old, and plan on replacing them. If that's the date on our tires and we're due to get some new tires. <laughs> I don't think that's how it I know. And the three to five years, you might have some slack in there. If it did sit on a lot for a year, as long as they were taken care of, probably weren't. You know, you might get the, the three to five, four year mark out of there, but be aware of how old your tires are and replace them accordingly. That's right. Another thing that, that I'm still kind of researching into, because I don't know the correct pattern, is tire rotation. Just like on a car, it's good to rotate the tires on your rig. Now, we haven't done that. But you're gonna film it when you do Yeah, it. when we do that, we're gonna film it. I need to research first the correct pattern, which tires go where, do I swap them, you know, whatever. But I do look at the tread wear on our tires to make sure none of them are dragging too much or towed in, towed out, and causing uneven wear. Yeah. That goes back to the physical inspection. But we will be doing a tire rotation coming up, and we're also going to pull the hubs off, and I'm gonna check our seals and bearings. Ooh, that's exciting. <laughs> I'm gonna be winging it, but you guys get to watch. <laughs> Most important tool to have in your kit of stuff besides your UV protectant and tire pressure checker is a TPMS. TPMS stands for Tire Pressure Monitoring System and it is important. It is a day one purchase. Get it, you know, it's a few hundred bucks. Yeah, and it, it's a bit of a pill to swallow mm -hmm. when you're first buying all the stuff you need for an RV, but that's probably the most important thing yes. is a TPMS. Now we've been running a TPMS EEZ, I mm -hmm. think, and it's been okay. I haven't had any trouble with it other than the fact that we don't have a repeater set up for it, so it sometimes loses communication with the sensors. Full disclosure, TST, the people who actually make this tire pressure monitor, did send us a free unit to test out and make this video with. <laughs> Super cool. Uh, I'm excited about it because it's color. When I looked at it, at the rally. The rally. <laughs> it's just one of those things that's pleasing to the eyes and the the data is easier to read while, while you're driving. So. And he likes anything, like high tech stuff. Yeah, gadgets So this cool. seemed to be a, probably more to high tech gadget. For you guys to purchase this, we have partnered with Techno RV who sells the TST as well as a bunch of other Techno RV type things. We'll also link that below. And did a little chatting with Eric from Techno RV yesterday, and they have a really cool company. Mm -hmm. They are full-time RVers and travel full-time doing shows, but also just living in their RV. Mm -hmm. So it's kind of cool that they're not just Amazon. You know, I mean, Amazon's cool. We have lots of Amazon links. We love Amazon. We love Amazon. Love but it. for this type of thing, I really recommend Techno RV because as soon as you buy from them, you get an email with their learning series. 
And so it's so much better than just the product manual from TST. Not that that's bad or you know can't use it, but the email. Your breath stinky. <laughs> We're, we're talking, we're, we're busy. Sorry, we're, puppy intermission. We're, we're busy here. So when, Daisy, lay down. Cool. Good, good girl. She gets all excited when we talk about RV technical stuff. Yeah, <laughs> especially <laughs> tire safety. So Techno RV, their motto is learn here, buy here, get support here, which is really cool because they're selling things that they believe in and that they will support. They support the products they sell directly, uh, which is really cool. That is cool. I am gonna go through the unboxing and programming of the TST and installing it and all that cool stuff. Also, we're going to take you on our first drive with it, which is gonna be a long drive over about- A long drive, a very long drive from yeah. Ohio to the Smoky Mountains. So we'll take you along on that ride as we evaluate it in use, mm -hmm. see how we like it and give you our feedback real time. But for now, let's get this thing installed. He's gonna get it installed. Let's, let's, you know, us. I'm gonna make some lunch. Then While gonna, he works really hard. Mm -hmm. Well, making lunch is working pretty hard. Yeah, then I'm gonna take a nap. <laughs> so let's go do this. In case you're wondering, TST stands for, boom, Truck System Technologies. So this is the main dealio here. This is the tire pressure monitoring system, TST 507 FT6C with repeater included. Having the repeater is key because you're gonna have to buy one anyway. We've been running this guy here which is the EEZ. And I think you're gonna see, if you look at that screen there, and we'll fire them up side by side so you can see the difference. The new one is much easier to read with its color, LED, LCDs. Let's take a look here. They sent us this main system. Don't need this, because I have the email from Techno RV. This particular system is flow through. So you can get two kinds of sensors. You can get the flow through style that look like this, and they are designed to flow through. They fill connection on one side and screws on the other side. Now, you don't want to use these flow through connections on rubber valve stems. You want steel valve stems or metal valve stems because the weight of them is a little bit more than these cap sensors. The cap sensors look like this and they have this little anti-theft thing on them. And basically all that is is somebody tries to steal it, it spins. But when you go to take the cap off, You've got to use this special tool that goes over it and that way you can use this to turn the base of it and you're not just spinning it which of course is the anti-theft thing this is the tst system i did cheat and charge it up ahead of time so let's turn these on side by side and take a look here they are off turn them both on there pretty big difference in what they look like the Looks like the camera might be making it look a little bit funky, but it's nice, solid, very bright, high contrast on black. They're both rechargeable, which is nice. Um, I really like that with these because it's one less wire to rig up in your truck. Battery lasts a good long time on these. I, with this easy one, I've charged it maybe, you know, once every four or five trips. The thing I do like about this TST system. The EEZ has a proprietary charging connection there, so you have to have their charger. The TST is a standard USB port. So I like this so far. I like how it looks. I like how it feels. Also in the kit, suction cup window mount, which we will be using. Clicks right in there. Also in the kit, this is the repeater. I will be wiring this up in our front bay, and I'll probably just connect it right to the batteries, but it's pretty straightforward. Red and black, positive, negative, and the repeater piece. I like that it comes with a repeater and you don't have to buy it separately. That's pretty cool. It also comes with a charging cable and USB adapter. And this is kind of neat. Uh, for those of you that don't want to mount this on your windshield, it does have a little sort of dashboard rubber piece here that you can, you know, it sets in there and can sit right on the dash. So that's what comes in this standard kit. When you order from Techno RB, they give you the option to add additional sensors when you're placing your order so you can get the right number. So they sent me six of the pass-through, got six of the cap. So since I've got rubber valve stems on the rig, I'm gonna use the six cap on the rig, and I'm gonna try to get these on the truck. Let's get into programming this thing, because that's the first step. They give you a little sticker kit here. I'm gonna use the email, like I mentioned, when you purchase a product from them, they email you their learning series uh, on that particular product or products that you buy. 
and it's very well written. It's much easier to read typically than a manual and it also has some recommendations in there. So they recommend setting the sensors on a table in the formation that they will be programmed to the monitor. That makes sense. And for my mind, this is going forward. We'll use these. So, you know, you can kind of put these however you want, whatever makes sense to you. Turn the monitor on. Press and hold the set button until it beeps. Scroll to the tire that you would like to first program. Until I've got the inside one right there flashing, you can see it. Now that I've got that, I press set. I put the sensor down here and press the go button. There, that's the code for the sensor. And now I can use the button to skip around to the other ones. I'll link also, there's a much better video of programming this that Techno RV has done. I'm just gonna get through this, let's get them all programmed. All the sensors are programmed in, it's telling me I've got low pressure on all the tires. But this is kinda cool, you can see how I've laid them out. I've got the truck front, truck rear, and then each set going back. In the email that you get, the uh, learning series email, it does have links to videos of programming this and of changing the units of measurement and Fahrenheit and Celsius, as well as setting your thresholds and your parameters. So if you think I kind of zip through it kind of fast, that's on purpose. This is not a programming video, how to set this up. This is a review and I would say it's pretty easy to program. So now I think I need to set my thresholds. And here's where it's a little bit different than what you'll get from buying something on Amazon. Uh, he does talk in here about recommendations for those thresholds. So basically the general parameters are low pressure warning at 10% below your tire pressures. So you set each axle's threshold, which is cool. So my front axle, 70 PSI minus 10% would be 63 PSI. For my rear tires, that's 65 minus 10%, 58.5. Again, I'm gonna be conservative and say 59. Now my low pressure on the trailer tires of 110 PSI, of course, that would be uh, 11 PSI, so 99 would be the low, but again, I'm gonna be conservative and I'm gonna set it to 100. And it's already at 100. I think that's the default. If you notice that you don't set each trailer axle separately, they're setting them all at once, that's good. All your axles on your trailer should be the same. I'm going to go do the same thing with high pressure. What is recommended here is 20 to 25% above. So 25% over is 137 and a half. 20% is 132. So I'm gonna go in the middle there. I'm gonna split the difference and call it 135. My f drive tires, my f uh, steer tires rather, 70. So between 84 and 87.5. Again, I'll split the difference at 85 PSI. Drive axle, 65 PSI, 81. So 78, 81, let's just call it 80. 80 PSI will be my high. So 85 on the steer axle, 80 on the drive axle, 135 on the trailer. So I've got my low pressure, I've got my high pressure, high temperature alarm setting. This is a tricky one because obviously a lot depends on where you're starting out and how, what the ambient temperature is. The recommendation from Techno RV is that we leave this at the default high temperature of 158. I'm reluctant to leave it at 158. I would rather be warned too early than too late. So I am going to set the temperature to, we'll just say 145 degrees. If it starts alarming on me, uh, like we're driving through the desert next year and it starts freaking out because it's already hot, I can adjust that back up at that time. For now, I'm gonna put it at 145 degrees. Boom. So let's just do a quick review here. I laid out my sensors. I labeled them in an orientation that makes sense to me. You may do it differently. You can use the stickers any way you want. Don't use stickers, whatever. Doesn't matter as long as you've got some way to track which ones of these correspond to which ones of these. Uh, so after you program the sensors, you set in whether you want Fahrenheit or Celsius whether you want millibars or PSI. If you're in Canada, maybe that's what you use. And then you set the pressure threshold. You set low pressure thresholds for all the tires, actually for each axle. Then you set the high pressure threshold for each axle. Then you set your high temperature threshold period. And that's it, it's done, it's ready to go. I think it's done raining. So let's go out and install these things on the actual tires. 
fire this thing up and see what our pressures are. We're gonna be departing here in a day and a half, so I'll just start my T24 early. If you haven't seen our full camp breakdown and setup video, you should check that out. It's very long, but uh, we talk about checking tire pressure the day before we leave. That way we've got time to remedy any problems. So let's go do it. That's the problem. Getting these things on and off, you tend to lose a bit of air. So I'm going to see how quickly I can get these things on with the wrench. If it's a pain, I will take these caps off. So you can kind of see this little scent, this little wrench just goes around here and then you turn with this. So let's give it a shot. You know what? Those are steel valve stems. I don't know why I thought they were rubber. I could have just put the pass-through sensors on here and left them on there. Yeah, they'll come off and on pretty easy. Oh, unless, unless you drop the thing and let a bunch of air out. Every project some, sometimes has that point where you think, should I go back and start over? I really think the flow-through sensors would be better on these tires, and then I don't have to worry about them getting on the dually. I think I'm gonna go back inside and do this over again. <laughs> <laughs> and put the flow through sensors on these wheels and the cap sensors on the truck. And it's got to reprogram the sensors. I'm also going to take these anti theft caps off because using this little wrench is it's not fun. It's, it's a pain. It's a pain in the ass. I'm not going to bore you with the reprogramming of all these sensors. It's just the same thing except doing it over again. So I'm going to go do that. I'm going to take the little spinny things. I'm gonna go take these off and I'm gonna, it'll be much easier to get everything on. Okay. <laughs> it was, it only took me like 10 minutes. Uh, most of the time was spent peeling off stickers and rearranging them because having the T prefix stickers on the truck could have drove me crazy. Just, I'm weird like that. So, bottom line is, got my pass through sensors all programmed in to the trailer tires. And of course, it's starting to rain. Go put the driver's side on now. You don't have to follow me for that. I'll just go over there and do it, and then we'll go do the truck. All right, so getting these on should be much easier. I pulled off the uh, little spinny security thing, and it should go right on. Getting to these inside dualies is a pain. Got them on, get the camera out of the rain while I get the rest of these on. And then we will look at the beater and then we'll be done. Minus the suction cup mirror thing. Side note, I know I'm probably gonna get questions about these mud flaps. Pretty freaking cool, huh? These mud flaps are made by a company called Duraflap. I got their contact information through somebody on Facebook and it turned out that this custom polished chrome, polished aluminum, whatever it is, the custom artwork, the mud flaps, everything all in was about 350 bucks. If you've done any shopping for mud flaps, good thick dually ones like this that hang nice and low, you'll know that's a pretty good price. I'll be putting a blog post together on our website, so be sure to go to our website and subscribe so you know when I do stuff like that. That won't make it into its own video. Okay, so all of these sensors are installed on the truck and on the rig. Before I turn it on and test it, I wanna get this guy installed right here. This is the repeater, picks up the signal from the sensors and repeats it. Basically extends the range. I know from experience that the old monitor, not that old, had it eight months, the EZ tire monitor, EZ, I hate that name. The EZ tire monitor would lose connection now and again. And you know, the monitor is way up in the cab and the tires are way in the back of the rig, so that kind of makes sense. So I'm gonna put this in before I procrastinate and then don't ever do it. I've got 12 volt power up in here, so it's pretty straightforward. I don't think this thing will provide that much parasitic drain, but I might install a switch on it later. Let's take a look, see what we got. Yeah, I'm guilty. I store stuff up here sometimes. Extra DC wiring. I would wire this up to these bus bars, but I have not installed them yet, as you can tell, because they're in my hands. A little fuse in there, just for safety. I'm gonna slide that right off. That way I've got 
nice long leads. Gonna have to strip those, of course. Okay, this should be pretty easy. It's not pretty, but I've got the repeater wired up and it's a temporary job because I'm gonna be putting in bus bars and a battery monitor and I'll neaten it up when I do that. For now, it's just connected sensor right to the battery and of course ground. And you can see I've got juice. I am just going to basically let this thing dangle. I'll leave it right there. As long as it's up here and it's providing that link to be closer. This will also give me a chance to test it out inside here versus mounting it you know, maybe up here somewhere. It's, it would be a pretty easy thing to do. So the moment of truth, and this is one thing I've been curious about, is how fast will this thing pick up all the sensors? The EEZ took about five, sometimes 10 minutes before it detected all of them. It's on now. I do use this uh, when I'm doing my T24 to check all the pressures. I wonder if that's accurate. It picked up one of the truck's steer axle right away and said it had 62 PSI. I'm gonna have to go in the truck and see if that's accurate. It might be, it's cold. It's picking them up pretty quickly. I might have to double check my thresholds here. I do like that the low pressure indicator is the same as you would see in a vehicle. The um, EZ didn't really do anything, it beeped and said low pressure, this thing seems to be sinking up faster. I'll give it a minute. While this thing sinks up, I'm gonna go check the truck and, and see if it's accurate. The um, truck did confirm that the tire pressure was low. It's getting nasty out here. It's supposed to be nice tomorrow, so what I'm gonna do, everything is installed. We will see you in the morning. It's beautiful. Definitely a better day to work on a TPMS than the rain and cold. I wanna compare what this thing reads versus what this guy reads, and I'll also compare those to what the truck sensors read and see uh, if they're all in agreement. But before we get into that, while we're talking about tires and tire safety, let's talk about other things that you are going to need. I consider this a day one purchase. We had ours on day one, air compressor. So your typical standard, maybe one you might have with your car, won't cut it. You gotta have one that can get up to about 110, 120 or better PSI. And this is a great candidate for a couple of reasons. This is uh, the Viair, and I will put the link in the description. Let me show you this little kit here. In the main pocket here, oh, trigger pressure gauge there. It comes with your angle bracket for your dualies. Although I have trouble with this one on the dualies, I have to get one with a little bit different angle, but that's fine. Probably use this connector more than anything. But this is the main pump with a quick disconnect and then it's got alligator clamps for the connection. So you connect this to the battery on your car or any other 12 volt source. And I like to connect ours up in here to the rig batteries because it's nice and convenient. Got a nice big door here. Put it here, my knees are old. If I put it here, uh, I can reach everything. It comes with, I'm not sure the exact length, but pretty good amount of hose. It comes with two sections of hose like this. Uh, with one, I can reach where I need to go from here. If I had to reach from the front of the truck to the back of the rig, I could connect them together and reach it no problem. So plenty of hose and that's key. All right, let's go do this. Since these are pass-throughs, I should be able to measure them directly. This one is reading 102 PSI. So you can see that guy. So the temperature did drop overnight and obviously ambient temperature is going to affect your tire pressure. So I try to take that into account. So it says 102. Let's see what this guy says. 102.2, good to go. So need to air this bad boy up. Okay, they're all in agreement now. This guy says 109.6. This guy says 110, right there. So I am going to do this on all the tires now because I know they're all going to be a little low with the temperature change. And it's also going to be staying in the 70s and we're headed to the mountains, so yeah. Boom, 110 on the nose. Can't see it too far away. This guy's reading 109, but again, this guy's going to round up or down. I'll check back on him, but 109 is close enough. 109.7 now, so I'm happy with 109. Okay, so I am pretty happy with this. One thing I've noticed that's a difference. This thing seems to update uh, a lot faster. When I would add pressure to a tire and put the sensor back on, because they were cap sensors back then, it would take a good five minutes for the EEZ 
to update here. I didn't really care for that. I am going to text my contact at TST and find out what the sample interval is and if that sample is immediately communicated back or if it waits through a cycle or what. These things, as soon as I put air in them, it showed up here, which I like. So I'm gonna go do the other side now and I'll come back to you when I'm ready to do the truck. I've done that side of the truck and both fronts. Now I'm gonna do these back to rears. So far, uh, from what I've been able to tell, doing the pressure checks with this guy, uh, comparing the pressure from the sensors are dead on. So I'm gonna go ahead and get these tires aired up and we'll be golden on all 12 tires. So another thing that I've noticed is this thing is pretty darn good invisible even in bright sunlight i wasn't sure how this color lcd on black would be but even out here in the sun it's really very legible got good pressure and temperatures all around let's go over here where we can talk about this away from the traffic so overall i'm really quite pleased with the accuracy of this we're all good to go all i've got to do is throw this thing on the suction cup on the window don't have to hook any wires up to it because it's rechargeable usb port We'll try this out tomorrow on our drive to North Carolina. It's about an eight hour drive and we'll, uh, we'll see how it looks, how it works and all that good stuff. So we'll see you in the car in the morning. What do you think, Daisy? What do you think of the new TPMS? Do you like it? Yeah. <laughs> She's excited. <laughs> so we've been traveling for six hours and 37 minutes, 321 miles. And the, uh, the TPMS is good. I really like it. I like that it's easier to read. Yeah, you can see it a lot more clearly with the color on black. I don't know if that's OLED, if that's organic LED, it's very bright and... It's nice because you can see it with your sunglasses on too, yeah. which you couldn't with the other screen, you couldn't really see it. That's I true, with, with polarized sunglasses yeah. on, the other screen was really difficult to see. I could see this one perfect, unless I tilt my head like this at a 45 degree angle. Don't do that. Yeah, so a couple of things compare and contrast this versus the EEZ TPMS. A, it's color, much easier to read, like we mentioned, like that. Uh, it seems to update a lot faster. So other things that I like about this versus the EEZ. <laughs> I don't know how to say that thing. We've been traveling for almost seven hours. Yeah, it has a USB port for charging, which is definitely cool. I don't have to come in here and find the charger then you know, it's only got the, what do you call it? Like cigarette lighter adapter for those of you old enough to remember cigarette lighters in cars. <laughs> I think you said so far really the only negative and it's not really the fault of the product. It's just that the, um, the pressure and the temperature are in different places. Yeah, the, uh, so I'm used to glancing over at this and what I'll do while we're driving is I will glance at it, count to five, glance at it, because that's about how often it goes from tire to tire. And the pressure and temperature are reversed on this one. Still, obviously, they're both pressure and temperature. Yeah, it has I'm nothing to, to do with the yeah, product being I'm cold. used to looking on the left side, yeah. yeah. Well, I hope you enjoyed this product review slash tire safety. Tire safety, it's not freaking rocket surgery, people. It's, you know, put eyeballs on... <laughs> you put your eyeballs on the tires. Put your eyeballs on your axles. Look for things. Look for anything out of place. Check your pressure. Check your treads. Know what your date code means. Take care of them. Take care of your tires. They're take care of your tires, people. Take care of the tires. They'll take care of you. If you haven't already, please subscribe. We do these videos and ride videos and all kinds of fun, cool stuff that you'll want to check out. That's right. Make sure to follow us on Facebook and Instagram. Yep. Also, check out our website. We sometimes put blog posts out of good and interesting information, and that's probably our simplest way to communicate with you guys if we've got something going on. Right. Maybe we might go live after 10,000 subs. That's right. So yeah, check that out. Yep, don't forget to click the bell so you get notified anytime we post something new. Bye. And now we gotta finish up the last <laughs> couple hours of this trip because I'm tired. Yeah. All right, see you down there. See you.